Hey guys, Taylor here, and today I'm back with a brand new Division 2 video. It feels like a good couple of weeks since I've done one of these, but today we've got quite an exciting one. Today, Title Update 3 launched for the Division 2, which included a whole bunch of changes, some new content, some bug fixes, and even a release date for the raid. So in today's video, we're going to go over 9 cool changes that have made it in Title Update 3. Now let's jump straight into it and start at number 1, which is the raid release date. If you log into the division in the next few days and walk over to the helicopter that's just sitting outside of the base of operations, if you speak to the NPC there, you'll be given a countdown to when the raid unlocks. When that countdown is over, you'll then be able to interact with the helicopter, and I guess fly over to the raid which takes place at the Washington airport. Now at the time of filming this, it states that the raid is going to take place in two days and five hours, which is roughly about 5, 6 p.m. on Thursday evening if you live in the UK. So yeah, there we have it, a raid release date. Now it's actually a lot sooner than I thought. The way they spoke about it in last week's state of the game, I actually thought it'd be next week. So having it on Thursday, is definitely a bit of a surprise and it means I've got a good excuse to spend more time grinding out some gear and perfecting my build before it does launch. And talking of gear, we now move on to change number two and that is how you would go about obtaining max gear score gear and weapons. Now I feel the pain of playing through a mission and only getting 490 or even 480 drops, but they've changed it a lot now and you're more than likely gonna get that max gear score drop that you've been after. So let's quickly start with the Dark Zone loot drop changes. So Dark Zone contaminated loot does not drop below a player's average gear score and it will guarantee gear score 500 when the player has reached 500 gear score. PVE, so heroic difficulty mission bosses, stronghold bosses, bounty bosses and heroic control point reward containers will all guarantee gear score 500 pieces when the player has reached 500 gear score. And now loot actually leans more towards the top end of its allowed gear score, resulting in fewer items below a player's average gear score. And items that drop below it will be closer to the average more often. And I've actually noticed this whilst playing through the small end for a couple of hours. When I logged in, my gear score had dropped a little bit lower because of how recalibration has changed, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So I was at about 498. 497 gear score and when I was running through I was definitely getting 497, 498 and more often than not 500 gear score pieces so it definitely is working. I'm just going to make sure I get up to 500 gear score now and run through a few more missions to guarantee those 500 gear score drops. They've also increased the rewards for daily hard and challenge mission projects and they will guarantee gear score 500 when the player has reached 500 gear score as well. So that's a lot of options now to make sure you're doing the right things to get 500 gear score rather than being a bit of a guessing game and I guess in a way it involves less RNG because there's more chance of you getting that max gear score item that you're after. So yeah, a huge change and one we've all been crying out for. Moving on to change number three, and this is actually new content. If you're a season or year one pass owner, you'll now have a couple of new missions to complete when you log in. And you'll actually get a small tutorial when you do log in. But I'm gonna quickly go over them now. These are classified assignments, and like I said, you get two with title update three. Now within these missions, they're gonna contain four bits of intel, as well as a backpack charm. And once you've completed the classified assignments, they are replayable, but they are on a cooldown. So this morning, for example, I completed first classified assignment, which is just sort of northeast of the base of operations, and that's called National Bond Armory. Once I completed this, it did go on a cooldown for about a day and a half, but it did also let me know that I'm still yet to find three more bits of intel. So yeah, these are quite cool inclusions. I'm not quite sure on the cooldowns, but I guess it gives us incentive to log back in and retry them. But without spoiling too much, I did really enjoy this mission. Not too long, not too short, and it was cool that there was little things hidden inside of it. So yeah, two classified assignments available for season pass or year one pass owners. We have National Bond Armory and Nelson Theatre Hostages. Staying on the topic of missions, and the fourth change I'm going to highlight today is actually a new feature within all current missions. We finally have a post-mission activity summary. 
Everyone has been asking for this actually since the launch of Division 1. Pretty much after completing a mission, players have the option to look at the activity summary showing their performance as well as others and this actually has a lot of details within it. First up you get the option of a more basic simplified view and then you can go into a more detailed view to really know what you brought to the table within your team. As you can see I completed Grand Washington Hotel solo this morning, told me how long it took me, my accuracy, how many kills and how much damage I had done to named enemies. So yeah a really cool feature and I know a lot of people have been asking for it. Moving on to the fifth change and one I've briefly spoken about and that is recalibration changes. In short, when recalibrating gear you're not going to gain up to 15 levels of gear score, you'll now see something called recalibration score which is separate to gear score. Pretty much this lets the majority of stats be moved as they are from one item to another while making it less likely to reach the cap of that stat moved. And you'll see how close you are to the cap of this stat by the recalibration score. So the closer to 100, the closer you are to maxing out that stat. It's easier to understand if you play around with it because it did take me a good half an hour or so to actually figure it out and understand the mechanics behind it. But honestly, I think this is a good change and it gives us a little bit more flexibility with rolling stats over onto other pieces of gear. Now, speaking of stats on gear and other things like that, the sixth change in title update three that I'm gonna speak about is actually to do with some of the stats changing and in most cases increasing on certain bits of gear. So armor granted on blue attributes of gear is actually significantly increased. And when I mean significantly, I say a huge amount. A new role, armor percent can now be found as a defensive attribute role. And as well as that, health percent can also be found as a new defensive attribute role. And I personally think, although I haven't played around with these roles too much, this is definitely going to unlock the door to those tank builds we've been craving. And hopefully I've got enough time between now and the raid to make my agent a whole lot more tankier because I've got a feeling the raid is going to include a lot of very powerful damage dealing enemies. So next up at number seven and one of my personal favorites is new sources to acquire blueprints. There's not just one or two sources added here. So Anaya, the crafting NPC, now sells a whole bunch of blueprints and blueprints from other vendors have now been moved here. So all your blueprints from vendors are now purchasable in one place. There's now two new weekly blueprint projects, one per settlement. So in total, you're going to be able to earn three blueprints per week from these. And there is also a new daily project in the base of operations where you'll be able to donate crafting materials and then in return you'll get a random crafting blueprint and as well as that you'll still be able to get blueprints from control points levels three and up if you haven't already used that method. So yeah, many ways or many streams now for you to complete and unlock all of the blueprints that are possible. Again, a change that we've all been asking for and a change that is gonna be received very, very well. So I spoke a little bit about how loot changes in the dark zone, but one of the biggest problems in the dark zone is other players. There just never seems to be enough of them or the dark zone always seems empty. Well, the eighth change is actually countering that and that's preventing empty dark zones or at least the feel of an empty dark zone and the main way they're doing this is actually cutting down the number of brackets that we currently have so that's a huge amount of brackets in the division 2 that splits up the dark zone for example there's multiple different level brackets so it could be level 1 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 and then it'd be world tier one players, world tier two players, and so on and so forth. But they've now cut this down to two brackets. There's gonna be a bracket for level one to 30 players, and then a bracket for players in world tiers one to five. So in theory, this should fill the dark zones up more. Although the player count hasn't increased from 12, there should be more players per instance because they've been split up less. It's a little bit confusing, and I personally think this is gonna make a huge difference. The less brackets, the less split the player base is gonna be in the dark zone, therefore increasing the amount of players per instance. A good change, and again, a lot of people do complain about the lack of activity in dark zones, so hopefully this fixes that. Last but not least, coming in at number nine, 
skill mods. We've now got some all new skill mods and these are called Orcs Battery or Auxiliary Battery mods. The way you get these is you can find them as drops or if you craft a random skill mod you can also get it from there. What these do is actually apply to skills that will increase the skill power of that skill. So in theory this should allow you to unlock the other higher skill mods in the remaining slots on that skill. Honestly unlocking skill mods has been a huge talking point and by messing around with this you can definitely see it's a step in the right direction. But guys that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown of all of my favourite changes in title update 3 and if you are coming back to the division after a few weeks off hopefully this video helped you understand some of the changes that were applied in title title update 3. Now guys, before I do go, let me know if you're ready for this raid or not, and let me know what build you're going to be running with when you do finally jump in. But anyway, that's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.